Segment three, Gold and Black Live. Brian and I are strategically placed so you can see our sponsors, and that's uh, because we make Tom Dienar has to move his head all the time. But uh, Triple X, uh, uh, Kerry and Greg Ayersman have been great to us. This is our 10th year of doing this show. I know for Brian it seems like 20 or 30, but uh, it is 10. Uh, Triple X on the hill, but on the level of Purdue tradition since 1929. Hilton Garden Inn, Tara. Tara Lawson got to we'll go to the Purdue game last week and or a couple of weeks ago and a uh, uh, big supporter of ours at Hilton Garden Inn and of course State Farm agent Trent Johnson no bigger supporter of Purdue sports and uh, he'll be on the he'll be on the field tomorrow in the chain gang after doing his uh, high school refereeing. I think Trent is a guy that is just a, from a service standpoint gives about everything he can to the community and uh, and it shows up so we we always enjoy being around Trent. All right, uh, Brian, uh, basketball, and, and uh, you know, my gosh, next week, a week from tonight, right? It will be the first exhibition game. Purdue will open up uh, against Southern Indiana. Mm -hmm. um, early, early thoughts. I mean, there's been a lot written on the site. Brian covers it like nobody else, but this is going to be – let me just ask you, maybe all your years of doing this, as interesting and intriguing a season as you can remember, just because you've got some real interesting parts to put together? Well, I thought last year was really yeah. interesting because of the lack of or the loss of all that experience yeah. coupled with what you were building that team around. Um, you know, it was going to be really interesting to see how that worked. And it was really interesting to see how that worked. And it didn't work right away. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, I think this is a, an interesting season, like they all are, um, but some more so than others. And there was a point in time there where every year it's, Dakota Mathias, Vince Edwards, P.J. Thompson, Isaac Haas. You knew exactly what that team was going to be. You yeah. know, before that, before Robbie Hummel started getting hurt, it was, you know, yeah. you know exactly what you're getting from Kramer, Keaton Grant, Juwan Johnson, uh, Etuan Moore, and Robbie Hummel. You don't have the continuity now. Um, you do have the two juniors who are your best players right now, Nojel Eastern and Matt Harms, obviously. Uh, you know what you're getting, for the most part, out of Travion Williams, I think, although he can get a lot better. Uh, but you do have a sophomore class here. Uh, where you need them to go from one level to another. You do have a couple of new seniors, or one new senior and one other senior in a relatively new role in, in, in Evan Boudreaux, who's going to play a different role for this team. Um, so there's a lot of moving parts, and I think that your first moving part is figuring out your offense, how you're going to score. Um, they have pieces. What they don't have is necessarily, the, from what I understand, the coherent picture yet of how all of those pieces are going to be applied, that might be a process uh, for Purdue. It was, a, it was a process last year. It'll be a process again. Um, I think your hope is that you start off this season in a pretty good place defensively, uh, simply by virtue of your personnel. No, Joe Eastern and Matt Harms are yeah. a great starting point. But Purdue, it's typically been difficult to get out of the shoot during seasons really good defensively. That usually takes a little bit of time, too, for some guys to learn you know, all of their assignments and Purdue system and whatnot. Um, but I do think this team, there's going to be a process involved uh, for them, the same way there was last year, a different type of process, but a process nonetheless. Um, it is going to be really interesting to see how much the sophomores have improved, uh, how much the freshmen can help them right away, what Jihad Proctor brings to the table, but also just how Purdue's going to play, what they're going to do. Um, so, yes, it is a very interesting season. Yeah, Long can, answer to a short yeah, question. But, you know, yeah, I listened to uh, Chris Collins, I think, from the Big from the uh, Big Ten uh, Media Day, and I'm sure a lot of other coaches feel this way. It is different, though, now in college basketball that it now starts fast. I mean, you look at Purdue's November this year uh, or early December is, is pretty staunch. I mean, it has been for the last several years, but they're starting earlier now. But you now you have Texas. You got Wisconsin Green Bay is traditionally yeah. a pretty good program. You got VCU and and Florida State is it down in uh, Destin, Tennessee I mean, or Florida State? Tennessee or Florida State, one of those two. I mean, you, you got to come out swinging because it does matter for the NCAA tournament early on. Yeah. Uh, Purdue got behind a little bit behind the chains last year and, and recovered from it. But right. talk about how that's changed. Well, it's changed because just the quality of your schedule matters so much when it matters the most in March. Um, so teams have to schedule uh, better if they want to, you know, not only make the NCAA tournament, but be in the NCAA tournament where they want to be. Um, you know, I think Matt Painter and Purdue have done a, a good job here lately uh, scheduling really good schedules. I thought last year maybe they overscheduled a little bit. They would probably agree in hindsight. But 
if you don't go through that stretch where you lose those four or five, maybe that parlayed itself into you winning the Big Ten. Maybe that mattered in March when you were playing your best basketball. That's part of it, too, is, you know, you get rewarded for scheduling really difficult, but nowadays it doesn't feel like you get penalized as much for struggling. Um, and everybody is in the same place when all these marquee games are coming early in the season. Some might be more advanced than others because of their experience levels. But when Purdue lost to Texas, you know, Texas was playing its fifth, sixth game of the season, too. It's yeah. not like, um, you know, Purdue was the only one doing that. Now, Purdue was on the road, so that was a little bit different. That was the thing about Purdue's schedule last year, too, was that, you know, there were road games involved. Um, having to go to Texas and Florida State was a little bit uncommon. And then having to go from Florida State at, at like, 1 o'clock in the morning when that game ended or 4 o'clock in the morning, whatever yeah. it was, when you got home on that Wednesday night, Thursday night, whatever it was, and then having to play at Michigan on Saturday afternoon in your Big Ten opener, that should never happen to anybody yeah. from a scheduling perspective. Purdue had a really uncommon schedule last year. But, you know, perhaps that adversity, again, matters. So, you know, Purdue will play Texas at home. Purdue will play at Marquette. Obviously, Virginia at home. Uh, Purdue will go to the Emerald Coast Classic, yeah. where VCU is the only ranked team, and that's the one team – are the only ranked team other than Purdue, I should say. Uh, and that's the game Purdue knows it's getting. So it could get a ranked VCU and then either Tennessee or Florida State. So this two is a two. really, really difficult schedule again um, on paper. But, you know, for a team that's going to have a process involved for it, maybe that makes you better when it matters much more. Later and all, in the yeah, and all before December 15th, of course, your first right. two Big Ten games, you've got uh, uh, Northwestern at home, and then you travel to Nebraska as well. So that, uh, yeah, a lot to, lot to look look forward to uh, from that standpoint. Uh, we can read about all the recruiting on the site, but uh, Purdue's obviously got to, uh, s s maybe still another piece to to. to to fill in men's basketball, football still ongoing. Uh, I don't know what uh, necessarily that uh, what the drama is left. They're still still talking about uh, trying to fill out that class. And what what are you watching for as much as anything on the football recruiting side as you as you look through this weekend and through uh, up through now and through up to signing day, which will be in December. Well, right. Well, defensive lineman Bryce Austin is announcing yeah. here at any time. That would be a big. Or the second time in three weeks, we're on this show waiting for a. a a player to commit. Yeah. Um, that'll bring Purdue to 20 when that one falls in place. Um, Purdue's not done. I mean, they, they are going to, they're going to clearly push their numbers uh, in this class based on what they're doing. And uh, a big part of that is going to be um, immediate impact types of guys. Uh, they're going to be very active with graduate transfers. I'm sure they've looked at some junior college guys. Uh, I'm sure they're going to look at traditional transfer types as well, but you'd like guys who are eligible next season or else that's, kind of belies the point. Um, but I think that, um, you know, Purdue may look for another quarterback here. They have one coming in for a visit this weekend. When you look at Nick Syke leaving the program due to injury, when you look at the, I guess, uncertainty about Elijah Sindelar coming back next year, you might be down to, you might be down a quarterback. You might need to bring in another one as well. But I think the story from here on out is kind of told more so by what they – now, they have a really good class committed – now, a class that continues what they've done the last two years. But on top of what they have now, um, there's a couple more pieces that can be added to that. But I think beyond that, the important part is what Purdue can get that can help them right away next season. Linebacker, huge need next year. Offensive line, huge need next year. If you can find a defensive tackle, certainly wouldn't hurt either. Um, so there are holes right away uh, that could – could use some help if Purdue's going to be as good next season as it would like to be. All right. Well, stay tuned to the site. Uh, a lot going on. Bryce Austin's announcement as well uh, this afternoon. Uh, we'll have it all for you there. Okay. Well, I want to thank our sponsors, and that, of course, being Triple X, uh, State Farm Agent Trent Johnson, Hilton Garden Inn, Gordon, Kurt, Wes. Also, I want to make sure I got Wes in there. He was big for us again today. That's uh, Gordon's son. Uh, he always does an extra good job for us as well. And we will look forward uh, next week. We'll be back on uh, uh, as, as well. We'll have uh, a, some special guests lined up. And uh, the show, we'll have a show next week and the following week when Purdue's bye week. Uh, uh, we'll, we will not have a show, but that's a little bit down the road. So Tim House from John Purdue Club which will be interesting because we're going to talk to him about the, the fundraising that's going in involved in trying to get to 
the, the funding needed for Ross Age Stadium. So Tim will be with us next week as well. So have a great week, everybody. If you're going to the game tomorrow, stay dry the best you can and enjoy another week of Purdue Sports. And we'll look forward to seeing you next week on Golden Black Live.